name's Nick with Sweetwater here, and I'm here with my good new friend, Pete Dankelson. And we gave ourselves a quest. We both imagined we were playing a throw-and-go gig. You know, one of those gigs you turn up to and the promoter says, OK, you've got two minutes, you walk on stage, no sound check, no nothing, you've got to play. So this is our task, if you will. We each have an amp that's totally clean behind us, and that's it. Maybe a smattering of reverb, but nothing distorted. Then we ran to the store. We had five minutes each to pick four pedals to make our gig, and literally make or break our gig. So, Pete, what did you choose, man? What did you choose and why? So I chose I chose the, uh, the Marshall Governor. Um, uh, oh, that's one of the four. Yeah. <laughs> I chose the Marshall Governor. Um, I actually, I got it a little bit early. Marshall was nice enough to send it. So I, I've been able to spend time with it. And uh, I'm a huge Gary Moore fan too. Right. So uh, if it's good enough for Gary Moore, it's definitely good enough for me. And uh, I've been having a ton of fun messing around with you it. You know what's so funny? It's got a, sorry to interrupt you, but I, that's exactly what I said yeah, in, the, in really? the, the video that came out this morning. Uh -huh. I, I massacre still got the blues. Yeah. Oh, no, and basically no, say if it's, good enough, if it's good enough for Gary Moore, I rest my case. So. See? Uh, see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, by the way, and if you know this, but that this is allegedly the first true amp in a box pedal ever made because it's basically okay. a JCM 800 in a box. That yeah, I was doing some reading online. That like that's pretty handy. Yeah. yeah. So let's quickly hear the governor. We've talked about it. Let's yeah. hear what it can or can't do with Pete plugged into it. All right, all right. I haven't played still got the blues in a while either, so we'll we'll see if I can uh, hit it right. You know? <laughs> I chose the Plexi Drive by Wampler because mm -hmm. it's basically what it says on the box mm -hmm. and it's got a British flag too and I'm British so yeah, I have yeah. to get it. I was attracted <laughs> to it but it sounds like a Plexi with a hair more gain but it's also got a boost within it which is okay. apparently according to the good Brian Wampler who knows what he's doing when it comes to pedals. Yes, yeah. It's He says it's a green pedal, kind of like that Ibanez green thing you've got there. So yeah. it's a Plexi being front-ended by a tube screamer. So. Mm -hmm. The best of both worlds. And I figured if I'm going to play, if we're going to do anything ACDC-esque, it's got to be that pedal. So I've told you about the Plexi Drive. Guess I should play the thing really badly. So here is just the Plexi side. And I'm using a Matt Heafy Origins Epiphone. So I'm going to put it on the ceramic, the passive ceramic bridge pickup and suck. Here we go. <laughs> And now if I kick on the other side, which is the TS9 emulation. What's your number two and why? It's this um, Boss DS1 distortion. And um, the reason being, I remember, uh, you know, when I was jamming with some friends, kind of like early on when I started playing, this is one of the pedals uh, that I that I kind of, you know, it wasn't mine, but it was one of the first ones I had experience with uh, with using a little bit. And it's just kind of the you know the memory of having fun, you know, plugging in and you know hitting it, and then it would uh, you know it would you know drive the amp. That that was kind of a fun one to to pick out. Perfect, cool. So a bit of a nostalgia factor there. Yeah, <laughs> nothing wrong with nostalgia, my friend. Yeah. Nothing wrong with nostalgia. Okay, we've talked nostalgia. Let's <laughs> get nostalgic sonically. All Take right. it away, my friend. All right. <laughs> My second pedal is this fine device here, this ominous looking thing, the Sabracadabra by Catlin Bread, because it's basically Tony Iommi in a box. And as you, I'm sure you know, he used a, a Laney 100 watt tube amp, but yep. his magic came from a Dallas Range Master treble booster that was modified, then he lost it and could never replace it. But it's in this box, allegedly. So if you imagine Tony Iommi, who's a fellow lefty playing this, which would be way better than me, this is what this fine device sounds like, and I love it. And there's a distinct thing about Sabbath sounds. It has that low sort of girthy looseness that you can't get from any other pedals I've got mm -hmm. here, which is why I chose this, because 
If I'm playing a gig, we're playing some Sabbath, darn it, we're playing some Sabbath. <laughs> Sold. Sabacadabra. Like it. What's your number three, my friend? It's such a great tune, too, by the way. Oh, it rules. <laughs> I wrote it. He stole it from me. <laughs> oh, man. The next one I, I chose here is um, it's the Marshall Blues Breaker. Um, not what you'd kind of think of with a distortion, per se, um, but um, uh, I've, I've been using it for a little while, and it's just got a really nice sound. You know, it's got, you know, when you drive it really hard and you have it cranked up all the way, it's got this really kind of cool um, add your breakup sound to it. Yeah, so I, it's kind of that almost, well, blues breaker, you know, yeah. you think of like Clapton, you know, all that stuff, you know, from in the early, early 60s. With the yeah, blues. I've been messing with this too, and it's a great pedal because it makes me play differently. It really it's, does. It's yeah, not my it usual thing, so I have to, I suck with less, <laughs> I suck with more subtlety. Does that make any sense? <laughs> I, that's I what, feel the same way too. <laughs> so let's hear it, my friend. Yeah. That was really, it's got that, those sparkling upper shimmery harmonics. It, yeah, it's, it, it really sounds does. like a blues breaker being driven hard. Good. <laughs> Without making yeah. us deaf. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever played one of those things full volume? They're loud. No, man. I mean, that, I mean, I use this. I mean, I think the 20 watts is already super loud. I yeah. mean, I, when I got it, I'm like, how does someone like, like um, Paul Kossoff or like, you know, any of those guys that use those 100 watt plexis or those old Marshalls? I'm just like, how do you use the 100 watt versions? Yeah. So loud. Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> loud indeed. It's blowing my other ear off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> For my pedal number three, I chose the no-brainer for me. It says heavy on the box and it has two channels. It's by Empress, our friends from Canada. I reviewed this a while ago and it's a great pedal because it's got those two sides. It's heavier and heavier, <laughs> which is kind of me sometimes. After a meal, I'm heavy. Then after the meal, I'm heavier. <laughs> but bad jokes aside, the thing I love about it is it's got a weight control, which means I can roll off the lows yeah. and get that punch. So I normally set this one side, the heavy side, I have the weight cranked counterclockwise. And it has a built-in noise gate as well, which oh, is nice. cool. Yeah. And you can set it to be tight, natural, or off. Mm -hmm. And then the other side, I typically just set for more gain. And this is my rhythm lead for like modern-esque metal. And I recently did a show in Germany and for my old singer, Steve Grimmett, who sadly passed away. And... It was the throw and go gig, so I just took mm -hmm. this because I literally could plug it and go, okay, rhythm lead, yep. clean is the pedal off. So yeah. thank you, good night. Three channels, one box, bad player, all good. So here's the heavy side with the weights kind of turned counterclockwise so I can get more chunk. And as you can hear, the gate works. <laughs> So that would be my rhythm sound. And for the lead, I go the other side with no gate on so I can get that feedback going nicely without cutting it off. And let's see what happens. <laughs> Sold number two. So that's my three of four. So you've got one more, my friend. I got one more. And this one, uh, this is uh, it's just your classic, you know, TS9 uh, Tube Screamer. Reason being, again, kind of a nostalgia, a little bit of a nostalgia factor there. But this was uh, when I first started playing. This was in the box of, you know, goodies that my dad pulled out of storage along with the guitar and amp from when I first started playing. This was in the box. So this was kind of like the first, you know, the inner, this was my introduction to distortion, you know? <laughs> and what a fine introduction too. One mm -hmm. of the most copied and used pedals on the planet, yeah. or in my case, abused. But yeah, <laughs> yeah let's hear it, my friend. All right. <laughs> 
embarrass me again with no, your no. <laughs> oh. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. Now, my last one, and I feel kind of a wimp for this because I felt bad picking three distortion pedals, but at the end of the day, I'm a metal player, so it's all about distortion, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other sound is off, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you might have a clean sound for half a bar of something, but mm -hmm. this is something I stole from the late, great Edward Van Halen, and I always wondered how he got his lead sound, and it's the Phase 90 as one of his secret weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And I read the story and I got to work with Edward and the story behind it is fascinating. I don't know if you know the story that he had a friend that was a big Robin Tra fan. Okay. So he yeah. had a phase 90, but he used it like at two o'clock to get that warbly sound. Yep. So Eddie loved the sound, got it, and then realized that that sound didn't work for Van Halen. Mm -hmm. But he found if he set it back to around 10 o'clock, yeah. when he was playing a club with a really bad sound man or a monitor man that didn't know what that didn't care what was going on, by yeah. stepping on that, it would lift his lead out of the mix. Huh, okay. So yeah. it gives you the X factor. So I'm assuming on a throw and go gig, mm -hmm. the, the stand guy's probably having a beer while I'm playing. So <laughs> if I feel my lead's not cutting, I'm just going to give it that little Van Halen squiggle. And it's got that switch that takes it down to the script logo, which is yes. the one he used. Yep. Because out the switch out is the block logo, which is a more pronounced phase, but it gets to me it's too much phase. Yeah. I like it where it's at. So I'm just going to set it to about ten o'clock. Then I'm going to play it with the plexi drive and kick it in. And you'll hear what it does. It lifts my playing, so you can hear bad playing in the audience even louder thanks to this pedal. And I'm not increasing the volume. I'm just making it wider. <laughs> And there you have it, folks. My choices and Pete's choices. Thanks for taking the time, my friend. Yeah. And if I can impose on you for a huge favor, mm -hmm. actually two. Number one, give me lessons, please. <laughs> Number two, would you mind playing us out? Because you're better than me. So, no. ladies and gentlemen, Pete, Nick, take I, it away, I my friend. I think you need to read that book a little bit more closely. <laughs> 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 and you know the book he's talking about if you don't watch our other video it's uh, his book it rocks <laughs> thank you that'll be ten dollars thank you yeah play us out sir play I'll us out. You. <laughs> <laughs>